okay as uh, we have seen in the earlier class earlier lectures that grinds are perpendicular to the shore line okay what will happen in such a case is that also I have mentioned to some extent when you have a grind like this so what we expect is that the sand will come and get accumulated in this area that is these are the compartments as long as it comes and stays here it is getting trapped between the grinds but then it has to be retained if it is retained then you have the cumulative deposition coming from the ocean and then you can have the beach build up. So certain locations more most of the locations this is possible but at locations where you have predominant onshore offshore also then what might happen is sometimes this sand will be removed and then it will be trans, uh, uh, transported towards the offshore and after some time again that uh, bar which is formed here again it will be washed off. So sometimes during the monsoon the sand is removed and non monsoon again it will come. So now you see uh, uh, although this is uh, trapped in between the grinds because of the activity of the uh, monsoons this will be removed or deposited removed and deposited. So you see that there is a kind of an oscillation of the beach itself but if you want to have some kind of a sustainability of this beach which is uh, uh, getting uh, uh, formed then uh, you can think of some other means of having some kind of uh, a tea grinds this is one example as, uh, as you see in the second picture here or maybe like this. So that the, when the sand is trying to get back it will not be allowed so you see that what will happen is because of this uh, T grinds what will happen this will go like this the shoreline will get form, formed like this you understand this sand the amount of sand getting back or going back into the ocean will significantly be reduced because of these two projections okay. So in that way the shapes also shape of the grinds also play an important role for example here you see the different shape this of course we have already seen you can have something like this or like this or, or you can have a L shape but among and or the Y shape or the Z type okay but among all these things T grinds has been widely used. So whenever you do not have a grind with just one arm like the stake grind the other kinds of grinds together can be referred to as composite grinds. See later we will have a slide clearly mentioning what are the advantages of having composite grinds. But in the case of composite grinds although there are some advantages it is a bit expensive compared to the other straight drawing okay. So and also this is a bit uh, difficult because uh, the construction wise it has to be done a bit carefully if you do not uh, do it uh, and if uh, enough care is not taken there can be a catastrophe near the head of the uh, grind in fact that will happen even in the case of uh, a straight grind but here it has to be more care has to be taken in the case of uh, the T grind okay. Grinds as I said has been in use for several centuries in fact you have, we have seen that 1503 was the oldest grind in Wiesingen in Germany right uh, sorry in Netherlands not Germany okay. So now in this is a grind somewhere in the Baltic Sea of Germany where you see that logs of woods very cheap way of protecting your beach or allowing the beach for to be formed by construction of the grinds. What they do is they have done is they have driven a, a, a logs of wood as 
in an alternate staggered manner. So, what will happen? You see that uh, the uh, uh, the transport which is uh, so this is the C. Now, when you have the longshore sediment transport, this is being trapped and this is going to act as a, a groin. So, this also shows the advancement of the beach. Okay. So, this is nothing but just driving. Okay. But one, once you try to adopt this kind of cheaper way of uh, construction of uh, coastal protection measures as a form of a groin, you have to be careful that when you are trying to use this kind of logs of wood, make sure that when you have an obstruction that you try to have it normal to the shore. The idea is to trap the lungs of sediment transport, you understood? But there are instances in our own, uh, there are some instances where they have, I will uh, explain, uh, elaborate on this uh, later, where they try to drive this kind of uh, uh, logs of woods and then uh, you have the shoreline here and they try to have it a on a continuous uh, basis, on a continuous uh, and here it is parallel to the shoreline. Okay. So, but uh, this kind of uh, stuff has, uh, uh, this kind of method has really failed at several locations. The idea is to reduce the energy before it reaches the shoreline. It is partly achieved, but then uh, uh, if this itself uh, can be used as some kind of a, a detached breakwater, which I will try to uh, uh, elaborate on this later, this can be may be much uh, effective in uh, advancing the shoreline. Of course, you have to think of this when you have a, a longshore sediment transport, uh, uh, significant longshore sediment transport. Okay. So, I will elaborate on this again, but then this uh, slide shows that a cheaper type of materials can also be used for the construction of grind. This is a T grind, this is somewhere in uh, somewhere in uh, the US in the Florida coast, where you have an uh, uh, impermeable grind here, you see that. So, this is uh, uh, to protect a hotel by name of breakers. This is in uh, the US, where they have adopted uh, an impermeable grind as you can see here, in order to protect the hotel along the shoreline. So, it, ha it has uh, given some amount of uh, relief, but then they wanted to retain the sand which is getting uh, uh, filled in within the compartments. So, in order to retain the sand, you have uh, they have then later, this is a later thought, then where they have uh, constructed a, uh, an horizontal, uh, uh, horizontal arm, so forming as a T grind. Okay. So, this has allowed, uh, uh, this has uh, allow the formation of the beach and also try to retain the sand. Is that clear? So, there are other types of uh, grinds uh, uh, as you have seen here. So, we will, so you have a, a grind something like a hockey stick here or a V shaped as you have seen these are all straight grinds all uh, in some way or other control the wash away of the sand into the ocean. So, it is trying to retain. Then uh, this is a fishtail uh, grind which we have seen which has been adopted uh, in the field and then here you have the zigzag type of grinds, this is some, uh, adopted somewhere in uh, UK. So, there are other uh, types of uh, grinds which you can see here. In Florida, you have uh, uh, the rafts being used as uh, uh, which has been used and then here are the counterfort. Uh, so, like you have the counterfoot wall, right. So, this is something like that, wherein it is, it, it this also acts as a um, straight grind and the material used in all these cases can be timber, okay. So, this is not an eyesore in that, fa in that matter, this is not an eyesore when compared to the usual uh, rubble mound stones, okay. So, these are all uh, groins where uh, you know about uh, Venice. 
So, you look at the number of grinds constructed here. And these grinds, the strip of land, this strip of land is very, very important for them. So, in order to make sure that it is protected and the sustainability of the coast is uh, ensured, they have a number of grinds here, which is uh, now facilitating the beach formation and retention of the sand. Okay. So, as I said earlier, when it is used for protecting the coast, we call it as a grind field. Now, the same area, now the type of the structure we, they have used here, you look at this, there are two, two uh, arms jetting into the ocean, so from the uh, land. So, these are called as now, what are they called as now? Can we call it as a grind? Why not? Recollect what I have told in the last class. What, what are they supposed to be called? Training walls. Huh? Training walls. Training walls. So, these are supposed to be actually training walls, right. What it does is it uh, prevents the sandbar formation here and also facilitate the, facilitates the continuous exchange of sea water with this uh, <coughs> lagoon. Okay. So, this is a, uh, this gives us an idea about the different kinds of structures, grinds. Uh, although I am just referring to grinds here, I am referring to this. But then you also have these two uh, 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 training walls, that pair of training walls, three pairs of tra training walls, just to give an idea the difference between the training walls and uh, the grind field. Is that okay? So, what happens when the wave uh, is uh, passing a uh, grind? A T grind, for example, which is quite popular here. So, here you see that the bending of the wave crest uh, takes place at the tip of the breakwater. So, the there is a lateral uh, diffraction of the wave energy and which is uh, trying to penetrate into the sheltered area as I have said earlier. So, this area will be of waves with a lesser magnitude. Okay. So, and this is referred to as the lee side of the breakwater. So, the wave height here on this side is much less than the incident wave height. So, what will happen? The energy here where the energy somewhere at this location or somewhere here, the wave energy will be almost the same as that of the dip, I mean incident wave energy provided it is of a constant water depth. It is not of constant water depth, but the kind of phenomena which will be going on will be either shoaling or combined shoaling and you have the refraction taking place. But nevertheless, whatever happens even if there is a change in the wave height due to refraction, the wave height here the same kind of change will be taking place here because of the variation of the bathymetry. But in addition to the variation in the bathymetry, you will also have the reduction in the wave height because of this presence of uh, this obstruction, which is termed as your diffraction. So, what will happen? The sand, since the energy is higher here, the sand, the sand will be moved and naturally it will move to the areas of lesser wave energy. Hence, the sand will start moving and it will start forming as the beach which will be slowly propagating towards the sea or towards the uh, uh, break I mean towards the groin. So, this is how you would have the beach formed and this is uh, due to the uh, due to the uh, uh, this, this is only for a single uh, uh, groin a uh, single T groin uh, what I have uh, we have seen there. Suppose if you extend this as to a number of T groins with a gap in between. So, number of T grinds is as we have seen earlier, what will happen? Now, you will have a, the this area will be this area will be almost a higher energy. So, you will have some kind of a 
a tumbolo formation as you have seen here okay no no I, I will explain not, not like this the 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 <coughs> this is in the case of if you remove this if you have only the detached breakwater what will happen you will have the sand formation here because you have the on the lee side of the breakwater you have the lesser energy so this will propagate as uh, we as i have explained earlier also so then uh, you will have something like this okay the formation of uh, it will uh, it will go i mean it will uh, uh, advance towards the breakwater i am not talking about the stem okay if the stem is there then you see that this will be acting like this okay so you will have the formation of the beach advancement towards the breakwater or uh, towards the uh, t groin uh, so similar to what we have done uh, what we have seen in the case of a groin field due to a groin field it will be like this and due to the breakwater it will be like this okay the combination would be look something like this okay so now as i have uh, said earlier the <coughs> when you use grinds which are not straight but we which has some kind of arms then we in general refer to as composite grinds i have already explained the purpose or the uh, action or the advantage of having the composite breakwater i mean co composite grinds the composite grinds are considered more efficient than straight grinds in why is more efficient in what in holding the local shoreline position although i am saying holding the lo local uh, shoreline position in the sense the shoreline itself will be advancing towards the ocean okay and in order to ensure this uh, moving boundary towards the uh, groin this will uh, this uh, if you have a, a horizontal bar coming up with a, which is now being termed as composite breakwater a composite uh, uh, groin this will be more helpful okay in uh, preserving the beach preserving the beach which has been lost and won after construction of the t groin you understood then the composite groins reduce or laterally redirect the rip current that forms at the updrift side of the groin thereby reducing the offshore losses and then sand bypassing this is what i have said because if you have straight groins we have already seen what happens when the, the flow takes place and then the current goes in, into this so there is a strong current here which is called as the rip current and then after some uh, distance it gets diverged but then when it is moving like this there is a possibility that the, there may be some amount of cover taking place here and the stability of the groin also might become uh, questionable etc because if the toe of the groin uh, gives way then the entire groin can collapse okay so uh, composite groins can reduce this kind of uh, currents which uh, we have seen now the shore parallel segments shelter the leeward uh, uh, local beach promoting accumulation of sediment this i have already explained because you have the horizontal bar so it, it uh, doesn't allow the sand to go into the ocean accretion behind the structure also reduces the wave height that in turn will decrease the wave steepness it's also clear okay finally as a consequence with approach to the stem the waves will tend to transform more from more erosional to more accretionary the same thing we have, what we have said earlier once you say that the wave height is decreasing because of presence of a some kind of an obstruction in this case if you have a, a composite break or a composite uh, uh, groin then you see that the this will promote depositional beach this will uh, uh, facilitate deposition 
uh, even in an area where you can anticipate erosion that is why it is called as coastal protection measure is that clear. So although I have explained uh, the phenomena of uh, the longshore currents how they are generated what are all the dependent variables on which uh, the magnitude as well as the direction depend and what are its effects along the coast etc. But I do not I do not think it is uh, nothing can be better than uh, showing them uh, through animation. So let us uh, try to understand uh, the generation of uh, longshore currents as well as uh, the movement uh, of the sand and what happens to the coast when the uh, sand is moving along the uh, coast. So, so these uh, animations will be now helping us to understand. So a wave is uh, propagating at when you have an a wave direction that is when the wave is inclined or it is approaching a coast in an oblique uh, direction then you see what will happen is this will have this will have a component in the direction along the coast as well as a direction normal to, to the coast as we have seen earlier or as I have explained earlier. Now you see this is how once the waves break you have the flow taking place because of the generation of the longshore currents due to the breaking of waves. This I have already told you that the longshore current will be directed along the coast and these are basically the wave induced longshore currents is that clear. So next so when you have a, when you have a, a, a wave approaching the coast normal to it that is when the coast is like this and when it is approaching the coast like this then you see that there is no component in this direction. So when there is no component in this direction naturally you expect a Q to be 0 that is the quantity of sand moving is 0 and, the, and if it is slightly higher it is slightly inclined like this it is higher and then if it is much inclined so the quantity of the sediment transport will increase as the angle between the shoreline between the shoreline and the this is the wave and this is the shore normal this is the shore. So as this angle keeps on increasing you as the wave direction as the obliqueness of the waves in keep on increasing you will see that Q is going to increase and that is what is illustrated with the help of this animation. Next we move on to understand what happens to the what is the physics or what is a phenomena that takes place when you have the longshore current moving along the coast and when you when and when it meets obstructions. So let us the most commonly adopted coastal structures which can intercept the movement of sand are the groins, jetties as well as the breakwaters. So what I will do is I will just show you the we are now this is in the open ocean where you see that the waves are moving and you have the longshore sediment transport taking taking place that is there is no interception to the sand and the sand is slowly moving along the coast and now the moment you add groins. So we have a two groins there are three groins so you see how the flow is going to take place and this flow is going to drive the sediments and the sediments are going to advance towards the head of the groins each of the groins you look at the variation of the shoreline. So shoreline will be building up on the on the updrift side that is on this side whereas it will be eroding on the downdrift side. So you will have the alternate zones of erosion and uh, deposition as I have already told you and then uh, once it reaches the tip of the breakwater then you will see let us uh, examine this is a uh, uh, what would happen what would happen in the case of uh, once uh, it has uh, reached the uh, uh, tip of the breakwater, uh, dip of the groins, you will see that this is the final scenario that can be expected of. Uh, but it has to be carefully uh, planned. The spacing as well as the uh, length of the groins, all these things uh, play an important role in the design of uh, this kind of a coastal uh, protection measure. Now we will close this 
and now what we will do is we will add jetties instead of this now we have a pair of jetties Je pair of jetties are this will uh, serve as a, uh, an approach channel so now you see that you have the advancement of the shoreline the uh, direction of the flow is uh, seen in this animation you have the erosion taking place and now because this is uh, sheltered now the ships can uh, the vessels can go through this approach channel and that is the reason why the jetties are planned for and this is a kind of uh, uh, advancement and the recession of the shoreline and let us look at the uh, image the kind of image can be something like this so when uh, whenever you have a uh, sand moving dominantly in this direction this has to be longer than the other other uh, grind so because there are certain areas where such as of the coast where you will have although the direction is uh, towards uh, predominantly towards the towards the north towards the north there can be some amount of sand or the wave, wave direction in this direction also so hence in order to take care of this you have you might have to go in for a smaller grind otherwise if you do not have this this sand will come and deposit here and the this will uh, uh, close so you have a pair of grinds and now <coughs> this is what is shown in this picture also you see that the advancement of the shoreline takes place and you will have the beach formed and this beach can be used for so many other purposes okay there are a number of uh, uh, examples for this kind of a uh, pheno phenomenon so now uh, having seen this we will now uh, so what we have seen is a, a grinds uh, a pair of uh, training walls and now we will move on to the breakwaters so when you have a, an offshore breakwater as we have already seen what happens to an offshore breakwater when you have a breakwater like this you see that the sand is the beach is advancing towards the uh, uh, towards the breakwater because the energy on the lee side of the breakwater is going to be less so the energy uh, from uh, this end is going to drive the sediments and this sand is going to be deposited on the lee side such formation until it reaches the breakwater is called as a salient as we have already seen and once it uh, touches the breakwater we call it as a tambolo so let us look at uh, this uh, let us uh, look at the image so you see that you have a salient you have a, an offshore breakwater here and you see the salient being formed we have already seen a number of pictures similar to this so this i have taken it from this so i would like to project this grant of license this is only for this these animations i have taken it from from sources and the source is displayed here and with this i will I, I, I'm sure that this has helped us under in understanding the physics behind the longshore current and its effect on structures, near shore structures. So, so because it is always better to have a look at some of the uh, pictures uh, in order to understand uh, uh, the effect of uh, uh, these grinds. So, this is somewhere in uh, uh, North Germany, in the uh, in the North Sea where the island of northern eye it is uh, it belongs to germany where you the entire island it's a it, it's a tourist place and the entire island is protected by grind field as you can see here and because of which you have a, i have another picture so we, this shows a better uh, view about uh, how the grinds are fu functioning as a coastal protection measure so you can see the uh, beach here otherwise if this has not been there then you can imagine that the island itself can get at least the significant force portion of the island itself could get washed away is that clear and this picture illustrates yet another view of the uh, uh, coastal protection measure and the reason why i am i have put here some of the instruments here is it is extremely important to monitor the behavior of the coastal coastal protection measure on a continuous basis when it is coming to the question of uh, uh, i mean the grind field it's always better 
to understand how the wave climate looks like, how the wave climate winds at the grind field or the flow field etcetera, how it changes. Because see here that is what is being done here, you have the flow meters and the pressure sensor here to get to measure the uh, pressures from which you can derive the wave elevation. So from all this thing if you measure the uh, uh, velocities in the two directions, you can also get the direction within the direction of the wave within the grind field. See later when you are talking about uh, the sediment transport, there you will see the direction of the uh, wave is extremely important and uh, uh, in, determine, uh, in determining the effect of structure or even in uh, uh, that is even in the absence of structure, you need to have uh, the information about the sediment transport. So the quantity of sediment transport is one important aspect, but added to the magnitude the direction is also important which I have already explained in terms of gross sediment transport and net sediment transport this is very important. Okay. So uh, if you want to have some kind of information about the performance of the grind field, it is always important to have a monitoring program uh, within the grind field. So coming back to India, there are several locations where uh, uh, constru uh, construction of grinds has been done. See in for, for example uh, uh, Kerala, Kerala there has been a number of grinds with that has been uh, constructed few decades back. But somehow uh, the, the information is uh, completely lost but we do not have much of information about these uh, grinds and uh, one of these uh, grind, uh, grinds is uh, uh, somewhere in the Cape of uh, uh, in uh, Indian Peninsula somewhere here that is uh, Cape Comorin, so uh, tip of Indian Peninsula where the grinds were constructed as uh, early as February, uh, no, no, this was constructed sometime mid of uh, 70s, mid 70s, it should be around uh, 1975. So this was uh, uh, constructed by the Public Works Department of uh, Government of Tamil Nadu and uh, so you see that there are some uh, seven grinds there and all the grinds do exist even now there is absolutely no problem the stability of the grinds are not uh, questionable. But the purpose for which it was constructed is uh, certainly to retain the sand. So this is very important when you are planning for grinds. Grinds are more effective as I said earlier along the shore if you have longshore sediment transport and if you have more quantity of sediment transport then the grinds are going to yield very yield fruitful results within a very short time. Although it is called as a coastal protection measure there is no point in having these uh, grinds in a location where there is not much of sediment transport. So later we will be talking about the case studies as well as the quantity uh, as well as the uh, how the sediment transport takes place along the east along the uh, coast of India there I will highlight about uh, how where exactly the sediment transport takes place. So in the uh, uh, Cape Comorin uh, in the uh, Cape Comorin you see that this strata is not much of is it's, it does not have much of sand, the littoral drift is not much. So in such a location when you have this kind of grinds it does not really serve any purpose. So what we have done is during the uh, 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 so you see that there is there is not much of beach at all. I have only small uh, narrow beach which has been formed because of the these grinds. But uh, during the 2004 tsunami, what was what had happened was this area you had a, a lot of ingress of water, sea water, and there was a sizable damage done to property as well as boat boats. And this is the location where there is a somewhere somewhere uh, far away from this uh, about maybe about 100 200 meters uh, from this there is a small jetty okay jetty facilitating the berthing of small crafts for the local fishermen 
and this is somewhere uh, it, it is slightly far away from this local village. So, these people were parking their vessels in that particular uh, near the uh, other uh, uh, jetty slightly this side slightly away from this. So, this resulted in a big conflict between these two villages because this, uh, these guys they would not like to have other people coming and uh, parking their vessels. So, during the tsunami that was one uh, problem, but and again during the tsunami the damage cost was quite high here. So, looking at both the problems, the problem was referred to us and what we had we looked at uh, a number of solutions, options uh, doing some numerical modeling etcetera. And then finally, what we decided is it was decided that one of this grind that we have seven grinds, the first grind can be extended by about 350 meters I think. Not only that we have also given a, a small bend here. This is because this is for the reason is even in the case of in the event of a tsunami this can act as an as an obstruction and can reduce the speed of the tsunami before it reaches the village. So, thus it is a kind of a safety measure and tsunami is not going to come tomorrow or after tomorrow, but it can all it can be anticipated even tomorrow. But when till such an event comes as this is only a precautionary measure against tsunami. But at the same time it should be the investment should be justified. The investment here has justified for the simple reason that this can be this is being used as small harbor by the local fishermen and now the conflict between these two villages is not there and not, not only that this village is having now small sand bar, sand, sandy beach formed and that is being used for parking the so, now you see that how coastal engineering can be useful. It is not just uh, uh, engineering alone, there are a lot of social aspects also built into this uh, uh, field. So, when you are planning a, a kind of a structures uh, which we have been discussing, you have to consider uh, uh, you, you should have a holistic uh, view of all the parameters and other aspects which are involved while you are developing. Uh, the, uh, there can be a situation where you plan a structure, the structure can serve as a coastal protection measure for the stretch of the coast which is getting eroded. So, as such you would have solved that problem, but the existence of that very structure can create some problems downstream of the area which you have which you claim that it has been protected, you understood. So, all these aspects have to be considered before you really invest the money. So, this is yet another view uh, showing how grants can be used. This picture just because you can you see that the grants are very nice in protecting as, as served uh, uh, as a good uh, protection measure at, at least uh, at locations where you have uh, uh, long sediment transport. That does not mean that you have to keep constructing grinds after grinds. So, if you keep on doing that without any uh, aim, then what will happen? The whole uh, coast will be looking like a fish with tons. So, that is not the idea, and uh, another thing. So, uh, along the coast there are uh, there are areas where there are number of agencies involved, number of departments involved. For example, there are the, there is a system like a tourism department is there, fisheries harbor is there, commercial harbor is there, commercial harbor is there. Then uh, there are so many other uh, coastal highways, coastal highways. So highway department is there, highways which deal with coastal highways. 
then you have a public works department, public works department may be the departments that are responsible for generating a, a parks, then most important is coastal community. So, and industries, ports and anyway, ports and harbors coming into and uh, under commercial harbors, fishing harbors, commercial and there are so many other uh, departments or agencies which are which look to the ocean for their for the benefit or livelihood etc. So, you cannot neglect the importance of any of uh, these agencies. If uh, one uh, department does not really interact with other department other departments and they then they go ahead with uh, uh, construction of some grind then that leads to unplanned sequence of construction. So, unplanned sequence of construction can uh, uh, result in some kind of uh, uh, situation as shown here. So, this is not a correct uh, attitude. Okay. So, now if you want to have a, a, a planned kind of uh, uh, construction, so this is one example where, uh, uh, so look at this, this is a completely planned. Okay. There are other uh, projects that have been uh, that have uh, taken place in the recent past, particularly in the uh, UAE, uh, in the Middle East, uh, in fact, in, in the Middle East. So, there are some projects which we may uh, have uh, if we have time we can we will try to see. So, this is uh, something like a, a, a T grind uh, look at this how uh, it is serving uh, the location and not only that it has also generated lot of commercial it is of a huge commercial value. Okay. So, then uh, you have also the palm tree etcetera which I am not going to cover here, but the what I am trying to say is that the planning of coastal structures particularly the coastal protection measures has to be done in a under in with a, a scientific basis with a, a scientific basis and also consider all the aspects of functional environmental as, as well as aesthetic. If all these aspects are considered then that would result in a good coastal protection measure. Okay. This is a closer view of uh, the same location. So, as I said earlier, we had a, a picture for a, a training wall. Now, here is a, a picture which shows that. So, look, look at this. This is adjacent, adjacent to a river. Look at the vertical cuts here. So, that means that much of significant erosion takes place, it is all vertical cuts. And uh, of course, uh, the plantations, etcetera, you keep on losing your plantations. So, how do you protect? So, you protect not tea grinds, it is called as tea spurs. So, now you see the tea spurs here. The principle is same, the flow field takes place and the flow, flow field brings in your sediments and sediments get deposited and the erosion of the bank is protected, is prevented. Is that clear? The other thing is using the geotube. So, this can also be used as a, a groin which as shown here. So, this groin the here in this case it is used as a geotube is used for protecting the bank but this can also be put in a normal uh, direction normal to the shoreline and that will form as a, a groin. So, this, these are all uh, geosynthetic uh, material I will try to cover uh, uh, separately about the geosynthetic uh, material. This is another uh, uh, different organizations uh, different companies they have a uh, different uh, uh, material, but basically all these things are made out of geosynthetic okay, geosynthetic material. Are there any doubts? I think we have had enough about grinds. Now, all of you are familiar with grinds, right? Sea walls also very clear. 
So, now we will move on to jetties. Jetties are also perpendicular to the shoreline. If a solid has influence on the shoreline changes, used sometimes inside harbors for transfer of cargo. You have two types solid walls on four sides of the with earth field or open. So, let me give you an example of Gopalpur port. Gopalpur port is situated along the east coast of India. This is only an example to show what is a jetty. So, herein this is the ocean, this is the berthing area wherein you have the vessels coming and berthing here. Okay, these are all land. Now, this is the shoreline. So, on the assumption that uh, this is sea, on the assumption that this is open, for example, how do we generate a, a breakwater? Uh, uh, how do you construct a uh, harbor? You can construct a harbor with a, a breakwater like this. Okay. The vessels can come into this and then go into that. Okay. But uh, when you have like this, so you will have the advancement of the shoreline here because as uh, we will see later, the sand will always be moving in the north the net movement of sand is always towards the north along the east coast. Because of which you will have the advancement of the shoreline on the south and then on the north you will have the erosion taking place. So, instead of having a permanent uh, obstruction to the movement of movement of the uh, sand the other possibility is to construct approach trestle. What is meant by approach trestle? This is a pile, uh, this is a jetty supported on piles. Okay. This is in plan. So, Okay. This is supported on piles. So, you can walk over it or you can have the vessels going into this and then here I shall have a breakwater for example. All right. and Then I can have a berth here wherein I can bring in deep size vessels berth here and I have, I, we have the cranes. So, unload the cargo, once it is unloaded it can be transported through your jetty or the approach vessel to your land okay. or the other possibility is to you have the supply vessels small vessels. So, which will transfer the cargo and then bring it and berth it and you can. So, these are some of the concepts which we can think of. The idea here is when we have the piled jetty, the sand is not, the movement of sand is not affected. You are not disturbing the shoreline and after all what do you need? You need only the tranquility conditions for berthing of the vessels for which you want to have a breakwater. But whether this size of the breakwater is good enough 
for the required tranquility, because if the tranquility is not there, what will happen to the ship? It will be oscillating, then how do you do load or unload? It becomes very difficult. So, that is why you always have a breakwater here, but how long it has to be and how effective it will be in providing you the required tranquility is a question, which needs a detailed investigation before implementing. So, this was the original idea of the Gopalpur port, but I will not cover this only to illustrate to you how and where you can have a jetty, but then there is another picture which I can show you in the next slide. which will explain to you which will explain to you the difference between earlier we had the difference between a picture showing you directly the the difference between a, a groins and a training wall now here this is going to explain to you the difference between a jetty because this can also be referred to as jetty because it is allowing the, 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 this is the approach channel where the uh, boats go in through this and then it is uh, unloading or loading is taking place inside the harbor. So, this forms as a part of the harbor. So, we call this as a, a jetty or sometimes people all also call this as a, a breakwater or a training wall also, but when it is associated with the harbor we call it usually as a jetty. A jetty is another. Uh, so, see in this particular case, what I would like to highlight to you is that to look at the phenomena of the sand or the evolution of the shoreline. Because of this, the shoreline, because of this, the shoreline has advanced up to this. That means uh, the sand is moving from, from bottom to top, sand is moving in this from this direction to this direction. So, because of which you have the advancement of the shoreline, but on this side you have the erosion taking place wherein in order to control that you have the grind field. So, now this slide shows you the combination of jetty and you are. So, another thing is the other. So, jetties can also be for example, it can be supported on piles. only a representation. So, wherein I can have a, a pipeline okay. I can have a pipeline which is going into an intake well to suck sea water may be for aquaculture or for coolant purpose for thermal power stations etcetera. So, now the pipeline is made to rest on the on the jetty okay so the pile should extend you understood so this is the pipeline through which the water is sucked in so this entire system you have a, a an intake well a pipeline and then a kind of a sink wherein you collect the water for your purpose for the purpose for which it is all all these things are linked. Is it okay? Now, this is called as a, this is a very old kind of a structure where they have used a cellular type of sheet pile, steel sheet pile jetty that as early as 1965. So, the details are shown here wherein you have the sheet pile then the dredged cell fill you fill the they have filled the dredged spoil and then they have, so it increases the gravity and then it extends into the 
into the ocean. Now with this I stop.